Hello. You guys can hear me all right? Yeah? Cool. OK, well, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk a bit about the JavaScript team, as I'd like to call it, the business in the front and the WordPress in the back. It's like a mullet of WordPress awesomeness. Um, it's going to be a bit technical. So uh, if you're not a developer, I'm sorry beforehand. If you are, then uh, feel free to ask questions during. I, I really don't mind. I feel it really helps the flow of the talk. So let's see. First, a bit of my, uh, about myself. Uh, I'm first and foremost a developer and you know, also a business owner. I've been making stuff for the web since, uh, since I was 11. I think my first website was uh, 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 for Monkey Island, an old point and click adventure. Any fans? Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so I love open source, I love JavaScript, and uh, if you have any questions afterwards, if you've got to ask them, uh, please just uh, hook me up on Twitter. It's by far the most easiest way to get in touch with me because I'm notoriously bad at email. Um, I work for this little company and we, uh, uh, we do a lot of WordPress websites. We also do some more complex uh, like web application kind of stuff. And obviously we use a lot of JavaScript. So now, now it's time to get... Yeah. You do the web application stuff with WordPress? Uh, also, yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, so how about you guys? Uh, who among you considers themselves to be a developer? The entire room, awesome. Uh, how many front-end developers? Back-end developers? Everyone's the same, great. Well, I'm, I'm mostly a, a, a front-end developer. I, I do a lot of uh, PHP 2, I have some plugins. Um, uh, I also really like that, but, but my, my, uh, my true heart is, uh, is at JavaScript. So this might be a weird, uh, weird question to ask uh, for the introduction. So why, why JavaScript? Well, the, the short answer is why not? I mean, let's, let's try something new here. Um, the longer version of that answer um, I'm going to get into now. It, it really started like five years ago, I guess. Uh, Node had just come out. Uh, it, it, it changed the front end stack completely. I mean, um, we now have preprocessors, we have task runners. Um, as our back end developer would tell you, front end is almost becoming a real job. And uh, uh, what I feel is WordPress really can't keep up. I mean, if you've, uh, if you've built your own themes, then sure, you can put your own code in, but um, WordPress core will sometimes overrule you, uh, like in the recent 4.2 update, I guess. WordPress put uh, 144 lines of inline JavaScript right in your head. So go check your websites, it's there. It's uh, to support uh, emojis. And this to me is uh, one of the most uh, heinous things you can do to my code. I mean, it, it just completely clutters it. I can't find any stuff anymore. It's not too bad, I guess, but still, come on, we, we can do better than this, right? Um, and other stuff in, in WordPress as well, like asset management, it's just, it's, it's lagging a bit behind. Well, the ideal situation is we want to see this, right? We want to see templates, styles, and logic, and data all in neat little boxes you can take out and then put something back in. But WordPress really doesn't do that. It's, it's really mangled all together. So templates often contain logic, often contain queries, and that's, um, that's kind of a mess. Uh, what I'm proposing here is uh, that we do it this way. So for templates, we use handlebars. For logic, we're going to use Backbone, and for the data layer, so purely backend, we're going to use WordPress. Um, instant feedback is another great like, plus for, for, uh, for JavaScript development, I feel. I mean, who remembers those uh, god-awful forms that you used to uh, submit, and then you get a bunch of errors back, and even worse, all your input fields are gone and empty? How many of you have screamed and cursed at, at a form online? Yeah? Wow. 
there's really no, no, no need to do that anymore. I mean, we can validate in line with JavaScript. We can check if something's an email address. We can check if something is a, a, is in a, a regular address or if it's filled in correctly. And we can also give feedback if the user's done something right, which is phenomenal. I mean, forms are one of the scariest things in, uh, in the entire internet. So instant feedback to me is a very, very big reason why I choose to work with JavaScript. This is another big one. Um, JavaScript right now is flourishing. We have, uh, can't really scratch my ass before there's a, uh, before there's a new framework out, right? Uh, I, finished, I just finished a book on Angular and now React is coming. So it's, it can be a pain, but it's also very nice. We have a lot of stuff to choose from. And what I'm going to propose to you is I'm going to, going to just hand you some ingredients to start creating themes with JavaScript. But if you feel like uh, tossing away Backbone and putting in Angular and what, whatever, that's all your preference. You're the boss. I'm just saying I think we should do it like this. So in, in short, why JavaScript? Well, WordPress's default front end is getting quite outdated. We want a separation of powers and, and, and clean code. Uh, we want it to be better for the user and uh, because JavaScript right now is a very healthy ecosystem and also because it's fun, right? I mean, that's mainly why we're here. So the four ingredients I was talking about, um, these are them. I think who among you has heard of the REST API? Everyone, great. I'll skip the, the, the starter introduction. Now we'll use structure for, uh, for structure, we'll use backbone uh, for templating handlebars, like I said. And then the fourth pointer is I'll give you some uh, more like nice frameworks and tips and stuff to improve your workflow. So an introduction to the REST API. Well, we've, we've already done the, done the, the in, in introduction, so I'm going to skip this, uh, this slide. It's basically just WordPress as a driving force. We, we're just going to use it as a backend. Um, it's been developed independently as a plugin, and now finally this week, the proposal to integrate it into Core has dropped. So hopefully, we'll see it into Core soon. Um, I'll give you some quick examples to see what uh, what's what's so nice about this uh, this API. So uh, at the top we have a uh, we have our PHP example and in the bottom our JS example. For PHP we use a, a, um, an array and we pass that array on to a WP query class, and we get a nice query with all our posts. In JS it's just a, a, URL, a URL reference via AJAX. WP JSON slash posts type is post. If you want to create something in PHP, there's a, there's a function for that. So it's WP insert post, and again, we're passing along an array of arguments. In JavaScript, we use the same URL we used before. The only difference is we're now doing a post request instead of a get request, which is the default in, in, uh, REST, in the REST API. And this is... To me, a very big point. I mean, it's REST, so that means uniform. Everything's the same. In PHP, we, here we have a, a, a class being called, uh, a camel case. Uh, uh, it's, it, it uses camel case. Here, it's all lowercase, right? The code isn't really the same. Um, that can be quite hard for a new developer, a, a developer new to WordPress. I mean, most of you probably know this code already by heart, but it can be tricky to uh, start learning that, and that's because there's no real structure in it. This, however, is always the same. So we're going to um, get our WP data uh, through the REST API into JavaScript. We're going to use WordPress just as a backend system. And the main reason for this is because it's REST and it's easy to use and we can get to our data instantly. If you've ever used uh, the um, AJAX API in WordPress, you know what I'm talking about. It's quite horrible. Part two, application structure using Backbone, because nobody likes spaghetti code. 
So um, let me skip a slide. How many of you have seen this <laughs> in your <laughs> jQuery files? Yeah. Um, jQuery really gets unwieldy. It's, uh, it's like a snake eating its own tail, right? It's, it's con constantly giving itself callbacks. Uh, it's, you'll really regret doing big projects in it. We need some structure here. Well, Backbone gives us that structure. It, uh, it uses a system um, kind of related to a model view controller. Uh, so models keep your data, views uh, render your data, and controllers influence your data. And Backbone, we'd like to think of it more as a model view whatever, but uh, we'll get to that later. And we can still use jQuery because jQuery is just a, a dependency of Backbone. So there's no real um, hefty revolution going on here. Also, underscore, if you've never done anything with underscore, I recommend you check it out because it's the tool belt that JavaScript really, really needs. So what, what I was saying about MVM, well, um, our models, our Backbone models are going to be our data handlers. The views in Backbone obviously contain the logic and then the whatever is mostly the collections of, uh, of different models. But um, yeah, this is at least a more clear structure than, uh, than jQuery will ever give you. And our stack then kind of looks like this. So we have the REST API communicating with models, models communicating with the view, and the view passing it all on to handlebars. Another big reason to use Backbone is because it's, um, it's default in the, in the REST API. So the example I gave you before with the AJAX request, we don't, need, we don't even need to remember the, the URL in this case because the WP API already, already has a collection ready called posts. We can just reference it. So in short, we're going to use Backbone for our structure. Uh, jQuery and underscore are dependencies of Backbone, so there's no real giant shift. Requests go through the router. Uh, that's something I forgot. Uh, Backbone has a router which allows you to uh, check out the current requests and then act upon that. So the router is still in between the user and your code. And WordPress uses Backbone for the JSON API, which is uh, another reason to just choose choose for Backbone. Hmm. Uh, who's worked with the uh, underscore? No, a few. And you'll know that underscore has its own uh, templating engine. And it's very nice. Uh, I'd like to use it, but um, I much more prefer Handlebars. Handlebars is a templating engine for JavaScript. So you can just uh, type something like this. Uh, for each post, uh, plot the title in a link and add a, content, uh, add a div with the content. And this is very easy. You can, you can read this instantly. The double curly braces notation is uh, very popular. Um, and this just plops out valid HTML. But the most important reason for me to uh, choose for handlebars is because it's logicless. You've seen it's semantic, but it's, it's logicless. So it doesn't allow you to, uh, to run any JavaScript in the template files. Again, we want that separation of powers. I don't want to be tempted to do any logic in, in my template files. I really clearly need that, uh, that divide. And it's getting your system more front-end agnostic, right? I mean, we've had a... a a little case where we've uh, uh, used our handlebars templates, completely replaced WordPress, added in something else, and it was still working. So you can run this on WordPress, you can run this on Angular, you can run this on Meteor, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Your front end will stay in, in, intact. So like I mentioned, you can use underscore if you want. It, it has its own template engine. It works fine. There's lots and lots of uh, template engines out there. And it's mostly a matter of preference, but also handlebars has, has speed. It, it can uh, really render uh, templates 
very, very quickly. So why I'd like to use handlebars in our, uh, uh, in our uh, JavaScript team is because its notation is widely used, it's very fast, but it's mostly a matter of preference. The same for Backbone, right? If you want to use Angular again, you can use Angular. Well, um, part four is workflow. Well, in JavaScript, we solve stuff with, with frameworks. So I'm going to, to present you some um, like problems, at least problems I've had in JavaScript, and I'm going to try and uh, match it to a framework. Um, for testing and debugging, if you've only used the uh, uh, console log command and some breakpoints, uh, I'd recommend Jasmine and JS Hint. Jasmine is uh, unit testing and it can really help you uh, keep, your, uh, keep your team clean and uh, away from errors. And then JS Hint actually tells you about errors even before you run your own website. So that's, uh, um, that's very helpful and it can improve the quality of your code tremendously. And then with all these different frameworks and libraries, we at least need some dependency management, right? I mean, um, Kuhn is talking, where's Kuhn? He's not here. Ah, in the back. Uh, Kuhn is talking here in a, in a few minutes about Composer, uh, which is dependency management in, in, uh, in, in PHP. Well, in JavaScript, we have require. And require is, well, it's on the fly asynchronous model loading, and that sums up to it just, gets you the framework or the file you need just for that point in time or that page or that thing in particular. It doesn't, it doesn't add any bloat, it just takes it away from you. Uh, and it's all asynchronous, so it doesn't stop your page from loading, which is very nice. And then Bower is a package manager, it's like Composer, it's, uh, um, it's meant to keep all your packages up to date and it'll also bring in its dependencies. So if you're feeling frisky and if you want to start working this stuff out, uh, I've provided some links in this presentation. Uh, you can just click on these and um, it'll get you to the, uh, to the right tools right away. Uh, I've also added a few uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't mentioned. It's a is.js is a, is a micro-checking library uh, that can really help you in your um, if statements. So you can just say if string is email or if string is valid address or whatever. Uh, and it, it'll just tell you. It's a, it's a nice collection of uh, uh, regular expressions. And then moment.js is for the people who need time and time zone management. If you've ever done that in JavaScript, you'll know it's a complete drama. Um, Moment can really help you in this uh, and it can uh, make that stuff a lot easier. And finally, I added Confiture, which is a, a completely blank team. I started more as a proof of concept for this. Um, it has all these ingredients in place. So uh, if you want to start hacking on this, you can start right now. And uh, if there's anyone out there willing to uh, build, this, uh, uh, build this team out with me, that, that would be nice. We'll talk afterwards. So in short, there's a framework for almost anything. Be careful what you use. Um, if, you, if it really helps the user along, then please go ahead and, uh, and add it and maybe take away an image or two, but uh, be smart and check out the tips in the previous slides. Another thing I really love to mention is the uh, book Eloquent JavaScript by, Mar by Marijn Havenbeke. This, uh, even if you have vast JavaScript experience, I'm, I'm very confident this will learn you new things about writing nice, semantic and maintainable code. Thank you.